Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We're here at Telecom T's very own event, which is the DSP Leaders Forum 2019. And I'm talking with an old pal and now a CEO, Andrew Coward, CEO of Lumina Networks. Let's talk about something we've talked about before, but in more detail this time. The hype cycle around 5G, I don't know how many times it's been around the loop, but a fair old bit. Now we're coming to early trials. From your perspective as a CEO of Lumina Networks, um, you're helping service providers transform to enable 5G. That's what lots of people are saying. Where are we really and what are you doing? Right, well, 5G today has really been about the radio and the handsets, and that's where all the excitement is. Yeah. But the reality is that for 5G services to really get deployed requires the infrastructure to, to change, and particularly the control of the infrastructure. And that's where Lumina Networks comes in because uh, fundamentally you can't roll out all these new services on 5G without automation and without um, being able to tie together both the existing system, existing networks, and all these new things that you're putting together. Uh, and so having a, an open source SDN controller, which is what we provide, is really the glue to make that happen. So what do you think is really being trialed at the moment? in the States where, where you're based or in Europe or wherever, what's really being trialled? What's behind the hype? And what do you think needs to happen before 5G actually becomes mainstream? Well, let's separate the, the radio piece and the handset piece because, I mean, those are being deployed today. Yeah. But they're running on a 4G infrastructure. So the only difference that consumers can really see today is speed. Whereas what has to happen with the infrastructure and where we're actually deploying is where the automation um, then kicks in. Yeah. So for example, um, today, if you want to basically provision the network, you have to touch many different components, all siloed, all separate. And people think about um, separation between IT and network groups, which it's far worse than that. There's the optical group, the IP MPS group, the core group, the, the edge group, the, the wireless group, the, the, they all have to um, separately today um, orchestrate and manage their systems. So what we're talking about with 5G is to bring all those things together so that they get orchestrated dynamically and automatically whenever a new service comes up, whenever a network slice is delivered, whenever an application workload moves right to the edge of this network, then um, that has to be automated. So what's happening is that the carriers are starting to put the process in place to automate all of the parts of the network which will facilitate this. This is happening, we think, in optical first, um, because that's been one of the harder places to, to bring together, but link that with IP, and you start to kind of join all the dots, if you like, uh, of the automation of these systems. Thank you. Now, Lumina Networks has been in the news quite a lot recently because you're uh, working in unifying network controls. What you're doing, which is, you can tell me whether I'm right or wrong in this, heterogeneous network controls with open source, yeah. which you've just touched on, is, it is not easy, is it? It is not easy to bring together connectivity and automation of the existing network with the new network. And if we think about it, for all of the, the things we're talking about with 5G, what we're not talking about is replacing all of the existing network infrastructure. Mm. Uh, that's just too expensive, and the network assets haven't been kind of sweated out long enough for that to make any kind of sense. And so we've got this transition period uh, which will probably be another 10 years where we've got legacy infrastructure and new technology kind of working together. So the hard part of it is basically making the old stuff work with the new stuff. And that's where open source really comes in. So for all of the fuss around standards and, and standard ways of configuring and managing products, when you can't do that or you can't do that everywhere, you have to be able to do the translation between the old and the new. And so we use Open Daylight to achieve that, to basically make the network look um, simple uh, to any applications and services that want to go use it. Good stuff. Andrew Coward, as usual, thanks very much. Thank you, Martin. It's been great.